This is Guangzhou in the south of China. About 75 miles upriver from Hong Kong, it's one of China's biggest and most developed cities. Home to around 14 million people, and now it's one of a handful of cities in China running large-scale trials of self-driving cars on public streets. This is Pony AI. You may not have heard of them, but here their cars have become a common sight in the area around their head office. Over the last year, they've been running an autonomous taxi service in the city. At the moment, the trial is only open to selected family and friends of Pony AI employees. A pretty good deal though if you can get access as it's completely free. Hello. With just a few taps on an app, an autonomous taxi will come straight to you. So this autonomous taxi service is operating all around the district of Nangsha uh, in about a 100 square kilometre area, mainly the urban bit. So we've got quite a lot of choice of where we can go. Where should we go then? That is a bit creepy. The driver's got his hands in a kind of like ready to go position. There's some chap driving on the wrong side of the road, just there, uh, down there. The car did slow down a little bit, a bit of braking, but we seem to have uh, got through that one unscathed. What's interesting is some of these things just don't happen in other places in the world. If you're building a self-driving car in the US, and your car might not know what to do if it sees someone for the first time driving on the wrong side of the road. But here, fortunately, people are driving wherever they like. But making sure vehicles like these are safe enough to roam free without a backup operator is the next big challenge for autonomous car companies around the world. Ning Zhang leads the engineering operation here at Pony, and so it's his job to try and make that a reality. Sometimes in each uh, different city, uh, the, the traffic pattern and the driving behavior is totally different. Uh, say uh, in US, uh, is usually they, um, they obey the traffic law more and, uh, and attempt to yield to uh, like lane change. Mm -hmm. um, but in China, mm -hmm. uh, the driving behavior is more aggressive. So it's sometimes unpredictable, especially for like cyclists. Mm -hmm. So you need to put everything into consideration. It's something that they keep telling me here. Chinese data is just richer than data in the US. Right now, most self-driving car companies are focused on getting their vehicles to work in their home countries. But once that's figured out, the rest of the world is next. And it could be that cars trained on unpredictable Chinese roads will stand a better chance in places like India and Africa. Pony AI was founded in December 2016. It's only three years past, and we think we are we're almost uh, as good as the um, best autonomous driving car company in the United States. Because the roads in America maybe are a bit more predictable than they are here in China, do you think that means that they'll get to the kind of self-driving dream first because the problem's a bit easier in America than, than, than you will in China? Uh, actually, I, we think um, differently mm -hmm. because in China it's more challenge. I would say that uh, we drive one kilometer on Chinese public road, it's like uh, 10 times more value uh, than we drive one kilometer in the uh, United States. That's why we can improve uh, faster. So this screen here is designed to give the passenger an idea of what the car itself can see. That car there, this car in front of us, is represented on here as a different coloured block. Ah, you see, that was an interesting situation going here. These guys are pulling out, this car's coming up on our right. But the car's managed to handle it, the driver didn't need to step in. We want to go in here, I think that's why it's confused. Just thinking about it, this guy's coming in. This is a pretty confusing situation, even for a, a human. A bit of honking going on. But you can see why it's confused, because it wants to go in here. And there's a lane of traffic there. So, yeah, I think, I think that's probably what I would have done as well. I mean, I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. It handled a few weird situations. We had a guy on the wrong side of the road, but it didn't do anything that felt dangerous, which I think is the main thing. I mean, it wasn't exactly like a human driver. Still, some of the, the way it moved, some of the decisions it made probably um, would feel a bit unusual to you if, you if you were used to a human driver. But, you know, it's on the way. When it comes to technologies that are consumer facing, they don't have any obvious political impact or anything to do with content, then the Chinese government is very relaxed about letting 
entrepreneurs innovate first, seeing what happens, and then maybe regulating later. And that often is the opposite sequence to what happens in, say, the UK or the US, where governments will get ahead of potential problems with, for example, self-driving cars, implement regulations first, and then the industry then follows. The reality is that for a long time, China was lagging behind in autonomous technology. But as we know, when China makes a decision to do something, as it has here, things can happen very quickly.